table. This isn't even a desk. This isn't even a desk. It's a, it's a laundry bin. Okay, make it work because. Oh, you were even recording even better, man. So today we're talking Photo Tip Tuesday, and this is gonna be like a new segment thing that I wanna try out here on the channel. My hope is to every Tuesday bring some type of tip or trick or something that I feel I can bring to you guys and I think will help you guys be either inspired or help you guys overcome maybe an obstacle that you might just be on a shoot and you're like oh wait remember that one thing that i heard on youtube and maybe it it helps you maybe um, but anyways today i want to talk about prime lenses because i think that this is going to be a fantastic tip to pass along because prime lenses are amazing pieces of glass and it it actually boggles my mind that like more people don't actually use them they're most of the time people go with variable zooms and while those are very convenient and uh, effective lenses, uh, prime lenses definitely have their pros and cons. Uh, same thing with variable zooms. So today we're talking again, prime lenses, why you should maybe be considering getting one. So uh, let's get into it. Um, what is up everybody, Ryan Cow here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're talking prime lenses. Um, as I said before, I really wanted to bring a little bit more attention to prime lenses because I think that oftentimes we can overlook them, you know, and, and go towards the, the variable zoom, G Master, Zeiss, L series lens, you know, the crazy, crazy things. While we definitely don't give prime lenses enough consideration, prime lenses can definitely have a lot of pros and cons. And I think definitely a lot more pros than definitely cons. So let's, let's hop into it. So why a prime lens? Well, plenty of reasons to take a prime lens, a lot of pros, and I think more pros over cons. But one of the first things is that prime lenses are cheaper than variable zoom lenses. Now, the biggest reason being is that in a variable zoom lens, there's two pieces of glass that are moving apart from each other. And in order to really nail that focus, that color, you don't wanna get those color fringings, you want things to be tack sharp. It just requires more thinking, more technology to either, to get those two pieces of glasses to really line up and move accordingly. Not only that, it has to also have to be working about autofocus, right? So there's all these mechanisms that are being put into a variable zoom lens and at the end all say all, it's it, because it can do more, it just costs a little bit more. and it can be really effective. It can be really, really nice to have variable zoom lenses, but again, when it comes to a prime lens, because it's only really one piece of glass that you're really looking through, there's not too many things that are moving. It allows for your lens to just be cheaper because there's just less inside of the lens. With there being a lot less mechanical parts within that variable zoom, that then leads to the next thing of being that prime lenses tend to be on the sharper side. Now, two things come to mind when I say sharper. Um, one is the literal sharpness of your image. When you look at your image in post or whatever, when you zoom in, things look sharp and they're not fuzzy, right? That also has to do something a little bit with color fringing, uh, but we're not gonna get into that too much because again, prime lenses are gonna be a little bit more safer when it comes to color fringing. When you have, you'll tend to run into more color fringing when you have variable zoom lenses because there's more room for error. So the second thing that I was thinking about when I said a sharper lens is that prime lenses are often very much so able to be a lot faster. Now, when I say faster, I mean that their aperture is allowed to be opened up quite a bit more. And this helps with a number of, uh, helps with a number of things. One, obviously being that more light is allowed into your camera, which means that you're allowed to sit in darker situations and be able to perform it better. You're going to be able to help your camera instead of having to bump that ISO with your camera, you're allowed to shoot at 1.8, 1.2, 1.4, and that again allows for a whole nother stop of light to really come into your camera and that's really, really gonna be helping your lens out. So that also means low light performance, more low light performance for a cheaper price. So again, that's to be something that you should be thinking about when you're thinking about prime lens and the pros that it will serve you. Uh, pretty much the biggest con to a prime lens is that you don't have a variable zoom. You only have one focal length. And this can be looked at in two ways, right? One is that obviously it makes things a little bit harder because I have to get up and move and physically move myself when I'm taking a picture of either a portrait or a product or whatever it may be that I'm taking pictures of or maybe even filming of. So that brings me towards the idea of having a prime lens because you only have that one focal length and you can't just stand in one place and change that focal length, it actually becomes more challenging. And actually, I think that it actually makes you practice and improve your composition because you're not sitting in such a place where you can just, oh, let me just go ahead and crank that zoom and I don't have to move and I can get a completely different shot. 
So instead of just standing in one place and changing your shot, you are forced to move, to set up a different composition to make it fit, to make that picture work. There have been plenty of, of situations I've been in where I've been sitting on a prime, prime lens and it's just like, wow, I really, really wish I could shoot this from here, but I simply just can't because the prime lens, the prime lens I'm shooting on just doesn't allow for it. So I have to think to myself, well, let's get creative. Let's move to another spot and find maybe a different angle where this lens does work and where this lens will actually give me big benefits because it put me in such an interesting angle or an interesting place in order to take that image because again, I was forced to be moved. Also, when it comes to having a bigger aperture, that also means bigger bokeh balls. And while this is not something that everyone focuses on and everyone is thinking about, it is definitely something that makes pictures really nice. They make pictures look really, really nice, especially when you're dealing with such a, uh, a lower field of view. So you're shooting at an aperture of you know, 2.8, 1.8, anything lower than 2.8, and you're gonna really start feeling those, those bokeh balls and how, how big those are, how smooth and circular those are. And those all definitely are gonna start coming into play when you're being able to deal with a lens that has a bigger aperture. So one other con that I did kind of want to talk about is that when it comes to prime lenses, while I talked about all the pros and while those are definitely 100% pros, one more con that I would definitely want to talk about is that when it comes to having variable zooms, it's really, really nice because you're, you can, in a sense, be carrying almost an infinite amount of uh, camera focal lengths here, right? You have so many, you can have a 24 to 70, you can have 16 to 35, 70 to 200, and all these different types of focal lengths. And basically if you have a variable lens, you can have anything in between those, which is fantastic. So if you want more focal lengths and you're using prime lenses, that requires you to actually have more prime lenses. And obviously the more prime lenses you have, the more you, the more you have to put in your bag, the heavier your bag gets and the more just weight that you have to bring along. So oftentimes when it comes to prime lenses, it's often think about it as in a challenge of composition and challenge yourself to be better at making composition because while all those pros are fantastic, composition is always a big thing and it's one of the biggest things that makes a photographer a better photographer, being able to learn that composition and make that, that better. So that really does make a difference and it's a really great practice piece um, to work with. Not along, not just those practices, but again, with all those pros that come along with that. So I've been actually using the Sony 90mm macro exclusively for about a month now, and it's actually been fantastic. Again, I've definitely seen how it's forced me to take up different angles. There's definitely been a lot of times where I've wanted to take a certain picture from a certain spot, and I'll look through the lens and I'll say, oh, I am at such a, a, a long focal length that I can't, I just cannot take the picture here. I need a wider length. You know, so it forced me to take up a different angle and take up a different shot. And I actually ended up really liking that shot, maybe because I wasn't able to take that first shot at that first angle. But again, it forced me to think a little bit more about composition and move myself to, to uh, acquire the shot that I really wanted. I also really like the 90 millimeter macro because it doubles really well as a lens so really obviously it's a macro lens it does a fantastic job of macro uh, photography and it also doubles as about a portrait 